إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we need to invent into this religion of ours. وكل محدثة بدعة and everything we need to invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم ما بعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if I were to tell you that the days of Ramadan were upon us, that any day we would be informed that the Hilal was sighted and Ramadan was upon us, how would you act? What would you be thinking? Where would your energy be placed? What would you do to plan to get ready for that month? Well, we're just on the cusp of another special time. And there are certain times of the year Allah puts blessings in, where acts of disobedience are beneficial and advantageous. And these are gifts from Allah that He gives us. Us from His creation to be able to worship Him and excel in worshiping Him to gain closeness to Him. So the opportunity is great because we're on the doors of the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من أيام من العمل الصالح فيهن أحب إلى الله أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام العشر قالوا يا رسول الله ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله إلا رجل خرج بنفسه وماله فلم يرجع من ذلك وفلم يرجع من ذلك بشيء this hadith, which is in the Sunnah of the Tirmidhi, and it is authentic. Prophet Muhammad he said, There are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than in these first ten days of the Hijjah. They, the companions, they said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, not even jihad fi sabir Allah, not even going forth and fighting in the cause of Allah. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Not even jihad in the cause of Allah unless someone was to go out with his life and all of his wealth and come back with nothing. Meaning, he would spend all his wealth and he would die out on the battlefield. That's the value of these 10 days. There are no ordinary days. So it would be sad for somebody to squander and lose out on these special days because it's not Ramadan in their mindset. Those not on Hajj very commonly treat these days like ordinary other days of the year, but they're not. For the ones not on Hajj, these days are still very venerated full of opportunity to you gain, to gain reward and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he said this hadith that we just mentioned is a proof that performing good deeds during these 10 days are more beloved to Allah than any deeds, than good deeds done at any other days of the year without exception. So we look at the virtues of these 10 days as a reminder to ourselves, knowing that the hilal might be cited Sunday night or Monday night. This is how close we are if we live to see those days. 
These ten days of the Hijjah, Allah swore by them when He said, Wal Fajr, Walayal and Ashr. When Allah, He swore by Him, He said, by the dawn and by the ten nights, meaning the ten nights of Dhul Hijjah, according to Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhum, Mujahid, Az Zubair, and others, the majority of the Salaf, they said what's referred to in this ayah is those first ten days and nights of Dhul Hijjah. So Allah swore by them, and when Allah swears by a thing, it's not minor. It's not cheap, it's not something lowly, it's something grand. Like when he swears by time. In these ten days of Dhul Hijjah that we're about to embark upon, there is a day, there is one of them, that Allah he completed the religion of Islam for us. When Allah said, اليوم أتممت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا When Allah said, what means this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have chosen for and approved Al-Islam for you as your deen, as your way of life. Even this day, this day that Allah is mentioning, the day of Arafah, Allah, He swore by them in Surah Al-Buruj, وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ According to some of the Mufassireen, وَشَاهِدٍ The recurrent day, the recurrent witnessing day of Jum'ah, وَمَشْهُودٍ This witness day, this is the day of Arafah. Because the witnessing of the pilgrims going and sacrificing and praying to Allah and begging of Allah for forgiveness and His mercy. These first 10 days of the Hijjah, they're part of the 40 days that Allah Azza wa Jal, He spent with Musa alayhi salam on the Mount of Sinai. And we know during this time that Allah, He spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا And Allah says, and Allah spoke directly to Musa alayhi salam without Musa alayhi salam seeing Allah, of course. But this affirms that Allah has speech and that Allah speaks. And He has speech that He was able to converse with Prophet Musa alayhi salam in. And by saying this, this does not liken Allah to His creation. كَمَا قَالْ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ there is nothing comparable to Allah, and He is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَوَاعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلًا وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ فَتَمَّ مِقَاتَ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلًا Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, what it means, and we made an appointment with Musa alayhi salam for 40 nights and perfected them by the, uh, for 30 nights, afwan, and perfected them by the addition of 10. So the term of his Lord was completed as 40 nights. According to the majority of the ulama, these first 30 were the month of Dhul Qa'dah, the month we're in. One of the sacred months out of the four months, out of the 12 months, four are sacred. This is one that we're in, Dhul Qa'dah. The sins, they're more sinful. The good deeds, they're more rewarded. And many of us have squandered one of these sacred months. And these were 30 of the nights that he spent with Musa alayhi salam. And then 10 were completed from the 10 days of the Hijjah. These first 10 days are known days where Allah legislated that we should thank Him for the blessings He has bestowed upon us from everything He's given us, especially to the food, the cattle, and the livestock. As Allah says, وَأَذْنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامًا يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُمَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقُهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ Allah says what means, and proclaim, proclaim to the people the hajj, the pilgrimage. They will come to you on foot, and every lean camel, and they will come from every distant pass, that they may witness and attend to the benefits for themselves, and mention the name of Allah on known specific days, for what He has provided for them of the sacrificial animals. According to Ibn Abbas, these 10 days to remember Allah are these first 10 days of the Hijjah. And there are some of the scholars who said that these uh, special days, known days to remember Allah and mention Allah in, are Yawm al Nahar, the 10th of the Hijjah, the day of Eid, wa Ayyam al Tashriq, and the three days after the day of Eid, the 11th and 12th and 13th of the Hijjah. These are special days regardless. The first ten and the, thir- the th- uh, three after them. To remember Allah, to mention Him, to give up anything else that can distract you from the remembrance of Allah. Righteous deeds, as we mentioned, are more beloved to Allah during these ten days than at any other time of the year. 
These first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they're considered the best, as we said, Afdal Ayyam al Dunya al Ashar. As Al Bazar he stated, and Sheikh Al Bani, Rahimahullah, he authenticated that the best days in this worldly life are these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, better than the days of Ramadan. Yet many of us will go and squander them loose and squander them, and lose out on them. In these ten days, you see people fasting, and praying, and giving charity, and because they are days, in them are days for the Hajj, they can combine those acts, and that's why these are so virtuous and special. The pilgrimage to Mecca, the Hajj is done in these days, in these times. Some of us went before, maybe some are planning to go this year, some, it's in their intention to go next year or soon thereafter. And we make dua to Allah to make this of those who can go and fulfill this duty to Him more than just the one time in our lifetime. An Abi Huraira, an Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, قال, سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول, من حج لله فلم يرفط ولم يفسق رجع كيوم ولدته أمه رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said in the authentic hadith, whoever goes and performs hajj for Allah's pleasure and does not have any intimacy with their spouse and does not do evil or sin, they will return from hajj free from sins, from all sins, just like the day they were born to their mother. This is what many of our fellow brothers and sisters in Islam will be gaining by going and making hajj, making those sacrifices, abstaining from that intimacy with their spouse and from evil and sins. Imagine a lifetime of sins, yet Allah willing to clear it all because of those going in these specific days to make hajj to Him. These are the values, the virtues of these 10 days of the hijjah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. People going to make hajj at Allah's service. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Oh Allah, I'm at your service. Oh Allah, I'm at your service. Claiming that throughout these days, till so they go and they reach the Kaaba, once they enter the ihram from the niqat, going to the service of Allah, sacrificing so much, tiring their bodies, leaving their families, sacrificing their wealth. It should be something we all seek to do. And all of this to commemorate the call of Prophet Ibrahim salam to Tawheed. And the building of the Kaaba by him and his son Ismail السلام, and his sacrifice, willing to sacrifice his son because he saw in a dream that he should do so and his son said, If ma tu'mar satajibini insha'Allah min as His son, once he heard about the dream, he told his dad, do what Allah commanded you, you'll find me from the patient ones. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in these days is the day of Arafah, the ninth of the first ten days of the Hijjah. A day where Allah he frees more of His worshippers from the hellfire than on any other day. An Aisha radiallahu anha, an Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma min yom akthar min ay min an yagtak Allah fihi abd min al nar min yom yarfa, wa innu liyadlu, thumma yubahi bihim al malaika, fa yaqul ma aradha ula." Rawah Muslim. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith. There is no day during which Allah frees more worshippers from the hellfire than during the day of Arafah. Verily on that day Allah draws near. He descends from to the lowest heavens. He descends to the first heaven. And we don't ask how. We don't ask the kayfiyyah. We don't ask in what manner. Because this is something that only Allah has knowledge of asking how. Imam Malik, he said when you ask how to these things, it is an innovation. And the one who questioned him regarding the, the istawa, how Allah, he ascended above his arsh, above his throne, separate from his creation. The one who asked about how, he kicked him out of his sinnings. So you should stay away from thinking that you can comprehend how. But Allah, he descends on the day of Arafah to the lowest heaven in a manner which suits his majesty. And he expresses his pride to the angels about those who made hajj, seeking his pleasure, seeking his forgiveness. Saying, what do these people want? For those of us who are not on Hajj, we may think it's another day. But قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى سَلَمَ سَوْمَ يَوْمَ عَرَفَ يُكَفِّرْ سَنَتَيْنِ مَاضِيَةً وَمُسْتَقْبِلًا The fasting of the day of Arafah for those not on Hajj will forgive you two years of sins, the previous year and the upcoming year. 
to just fast that one day. It shows you the grandness of this day of Arafah, the ninth day of the Hijjah. And in these upcoming days is of course the tenth of the Hijjah. Yom al-Nahar, the day of sacrifice. Also called the greatest day, the greatest day of the Hajj. Because it is a day on which so many sacrificial deeds are done for Allah. The sacrificing of the animal that they came to sacrifice. The shaving of the head or the cutting of the hair for the women. Stoning Jamrat al-Aqaba. Stoning the largest of the Jamrat. Making tawaf on the day of, of the Yom al-Nahar. If you can, you can make it to do it on that day. But it's from the prescribed actions to make it. Yom al-Nahar, the tenth day of the Hijjah. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أعظم الأيام عند الله تبارك وتعالى يوم النحر the greatest day of the whole year for this ummah is يوم النحر it is this day of sacrifice the tenth day of the hijjah and Allah uh, Allah's messenger says and he concluded the hadith ثم يوم القر and then the day after that was يوم القر the day of rest the eleventh of the hijjah so my dear brothers and sisters in Islam the days that we're about to embark upon and when we know that the halal has been cited, we will announce it. These are special days, venerated days. Treat them that they, what they are, what they are for, the 10 best days of the year for our ummah. Do not lose out and treat them like no other days just because you're not in hajj. The best deeds, the best actions are the, first, are the ones done in these first 10 days of the hijjah. Allah is ready to reward for them greatly. May Allah make us from those who exceed and worship during this time. Qulu qali hadha astaghfirullah wa lakum wa Allah yaghfir lakum. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa nasta'hdi wa nusalli wa nusallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam how can you prepare even one or two days away for these venerated days? What can you do during these times to earn a lot of reward? From easy things to grand things, make sincere tawbah. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after you do any action of disobedience. But make it a time during venerated days, during holy times, to ask Allah for forgiveness and make repentance to Him. Remember Allah, even though it's not Ramadan, you should seek to get closer to Allah by resembling and obeying and worshipping Him, by remembering and obeying and worshipping Him alone. Reciting the Qur'an, as much of it as you can during these days, because that is the true source of the heart finding rest. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرَ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُ الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, with remembrance of Allah, will the hearts find rest. During these ten days, thank Allah. Thank Him over and over again for the renewed opportunity to be able to reach another special time, another set of holy days where worshipping Him and doing good deeds, He will reward more than He would at any other time, than at any other time of the year. Allah allowing us to see another special time to increase our good deeds, our rewards, so that we may make it to His Jannah and be saved from the hellfire. Be generous, exert yourself in doing acts of kindness, to your family members, to your brothers and sisters in Islam, to your neighbors, to your friends, whatever it may be. Now those are some various things you can do. What are the specific actions that you should do during these first 10 days of the Hijjah? Increase in the remembrance of Allah, as we just mentioned. وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ معلومات. And mention the name of Allah on known specific days again. From the majority, from the amount of the scholars that thought these ten days were these first ten days of the Hijjah, and others who mentioned the tenth of the Hijjah and then the Ayam at Tashriq, the days of Tashriq. Wet your tongue with the remembrance of Allah. Increase in saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Qala Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أهل محمد قط إلا بشرة ولا كبر مكبر قط إلا بشرة قيل يا رسول الله بالجنة قال نعم. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, a person does not make talbiyah for those who are in hajj, saying, labbayk Allahumma labbayk, and the likes of it, except that he's given glad tidings. And a person during these holy days does not say a lot of takbir, especially Allahu Akbar, during these times, except that he's giving good tidings, glad tidings. The companions asked, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, good tidings, glad tidings of Jannah? The Prophet وسلم, he said, naam, he said, yes, of Jannah. 
So watch your tongues with remembrance of Allah. عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من أيام أعظم عند الله ولا أحب إليه من العمل فيهن من هذه الأيام العشر فأكثر فيهن من التهليل والتكبير والتحميد Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in the authentic hadith in the Muslim Imam Ahmed he said there are no days that are better in the sight of Allah and during which these are more beloved to Allah than these ten days of the Hijjah so during them, say La ilaha illallah a lot. Say Allahu Akbar a lot. Say Alhamdulillah a lot. Let your tongue be wet with this. Forget the radios, the TikToks, the iPads, the iPhones, whatever it may be. Forget any of those things that can distract you. You're driving for two minutes somewhere, be saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. Keep your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah. وقال البخاري أن كان ابن عمر وأبو هريرة يخرجان بالسوق في أيام العشر ويكبران ويكبر الناس بتكبيرهما أبو ابن عمر أبو هريرة they used to go out into the street saying تكبير out loud الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد they would say it in the streets in the marketplaces and the people would hear them and they would say the تكبير as well yet you come Walking to the masjid, you enter the masjid at that time. You'll be leaving, you're with your companion, and there's no mentioning of Allah or doing takbir during these times. Al Khattabi, he said, the wisdom behind the takbir in these first 10 days is because in the days of Jahiliyyah, in the pre Islamic ignorant days, ignorance days, they used to slaughter to their false gods in these 10 days. So saying takbir in these 10 days was legislated as an indication to specifically slaughter for the sake of Allah upon His name. So this is the value to oppose shirk and affirm tawheed. وَرَوَى نَافِعْ أَنَّ عُمَرْ أَنَّهُ كَانَ يُكَبِّرْ فِي جَمِيعَ أَيَّامِ الْعَشْرِ عَلَى فَرَاشِهِ وَمَجْلِسِهِ That Ibn Umar, he used to say so much takbir during these first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah, even when he was sitting down or he was laying in his bed. He used to still be remembering Allah with takbir during these days. Fasting during these first 10 days of the Hijjah, during the first nine, for those who are not, for, for, for anyone who's not a Hajj, is light at the very least. There's a hadith that mentions it. Its authenticity is questionable according to some of the ulama. Regardless, Allah, He said about the Siyam, It is a deed which is done for me and I will reward for it. So those who can fast the first nine days, they can do so, and inshallah, they will find great reward with Allah. And standing the night in prayer, Ibn, Raj, Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he said, it is preferable to stand the nights in prayer during the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Imam al-Shafi'i and other scholars said that it's preferable to do so. Yet these are many nights that just are squandered, they're lost, because they're not Ramadan in our mindset. These first 10 days of the Hijjah that are, we're about to embark upon, if we live to see them, are the best 10 days of the year. So plan from now to get things out of your mind, out of your way that may distract you. So you can at the very least remember Allah so much with your tongue that it becomes very moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who are intending to sacrifice, قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشَرِ وَعِنْدَهُ أُدْحِيَ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُضَحِي بِهَا فَلَا يَأْخِذَنَّ شَعْرًا وَلَا يُقَلِّمَنَّ غِفْرًا the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the Avam al-Hadith, for the one who has a sacrifice that they are going to sacrifice, even if you're not the one with the knife in your hand, even if you are paying someone else to do it, here or somewhere else, if it's your niyyah to pay for that udhiyah, for that sacrifice, then you are not allowed from the night, the sunset, the night before the first day. Yani, from when the hilal is seen, you are not allowed to remove any hair, nails, or skin from your body to somehow emulate those who are in the state of ihram and hajj and cannot, or they, they, I mean, they're prohibited from doing these things as well. So if you've intended it, or you intend to pay it, even if you're not the one to sacrifice it with your own hand, you should still refrain from those things until your sacrifice has been slaughtered. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ وَجَدَ سَعَةً لِأَنْ يُضَحِي فَلَمْ يُضَحِي فَلَا يَقْرَبَنَّ مُصَلَّانًا the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever has the capacity to sacrifice but does not do so should not approach our masallah. 
should not approach Ramasallah. So this is something that every household should try in their very hardest to try and do to get nearness to Allah, at-ta'abbud al-Allah, bi'araqat al-dam, an act of worship to Allah by spilling the sacrificial blood to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sunnah is for you to sacrifice it or for you to at least witness it being done so that you can eat some of it and give some of it away. And this one-third thing is a recommendation. It's just a recommendation. There's nothing specific in the sunnah to it. If you cannot do this, or you want to increase and do another sacrificial animal, there will be a text message going out with the cost to sacrifice in Afghanistan, Yemen, um, Lebanon, and Syria. And if you want to do those, we will, there will be information on how to get me your name and the funding and the funds so that that can be done on your behalf, inshallah. But again, the thing closer to the sunnah, the best thing from the sunnah is that you do it yourself or you at least witness it yourself and eat from its meat. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I come to you today with a plea, sincere, yani, from the organization behind us and sincere to my heart and to your heart as the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam. As you know, the Muslim lands, all of them are hurting in some way or another. And right now, if you, if you don't follow the, the news and what's going on, there's been a war in Sudan since the 14th of April or around that time where there's been a long conflict. As the war escalated, of course, there was destruction of many vital services in the capital hospitals in Khartoum where there was specific targeting of like the hospitals and the infrastructure to the point where they were demolished and they could not be used. There was a unit that treated children, specifically children that had cancer, that had to be closed. And there was no medical intention given to them. And when you're in the middle of chemotherapy, it's not something where you can just stop all of a sudden. Because the children are really sick at that time, their immunity is really low. Some children have died. They were relocated to another area in Sudan where they're being cared for to the best that they can, but they are diagnosed with life-threatening cancer and they need immediate treatment and hospitalization. Chemotherapy, transfusion with blood, the treatment with antibiotics, getting proper nutrition, and having hospital care. There are 70 children now that are still affected, that are receiving treatment after their location to Wadya Medani Hospital. It takes about $3,000 to help support them to fight their cancer, to last, to live, at least just for one week. Just for one week. Hundreds of children are being affected at this time, and they're left with no treatment, and at risk of dying from this disease and other complications. Sudan's Children's Cancer Organization is a non-profit foundation. We will be collecting the money as the Islamic Center from today until tomorrow evening, every penny that comes through we will be giving to them 100% of what is donated will be given, will be spent directly on treatment. So because of this, this is eligible for zakat al-mal. If you have zakat al-mal to pay, the, the zakat that you pay on your wealth, this is a one category where it's eligible. Many of the things we fundraise for are not. Most of the things we fundraise for are not. This is because there are people who cannot afford something that they need to sustain themselves and live. So this is zakat al-mal eligible. So after the khutbah, give us a minute or two, we make dua for them and all the sick Muslim brothers and sisters across the globe. Give us a minute or two to try and fundraise some money for them. 70 kids, 3,000 a week. If we can provide at least a, a quarter of this, we can provide $50,000 to them today. Again, every penny will go directly to them. Will go directly to giving them treatment. The Prophet ﷺ, None of you completely believes so he loves for his brother and sister in Islam what he or she loves for themselves. So now's the time to prove it to Allah. You're in a sacred month. And you're on the footsteps of another sacred month and special days with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the time to be greedy. We may not live to see Dhul Hijjah for those who in their mind may say, oh, I'll delay it till then. Give today, may Allah reward you as if it was the days of Dhul Hijjah. 
اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزه يوم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين